Welcome to Nerdy Show, a weekly podcast dedicated to every facet of nerddom. From comics and video games to science and technology, if it's geeky, we've got it covered. Hi, I'm Cap. Hey, I'm Brandon. I'm Jan. And this is a very special episode of Nerdy Show. I like special stuff. Oh yeah, I know. I know you do, because I do too. Here's why it's special. One, this episode we're covering a fan-chosen topic. That topic is professional wrestling, and we have a guest, and it is Brian Knobs of the Nasty Boys. It's big. <laughs> Enormous, massive. So this episode, professional wrestling, is brought to you by nerdy show fan Twomper. 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 I like Twomper. Is is that the thing in Mario that? That's a thwomp. That's a with a th. Oh, it's close. But it is close. It is close. And 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 really, I, I mean, Twomp could be a uh, you know an onomatopoeia for when you hit the mat in pro wrestling. It's not, but it could be. It could be. It could be. Uh, and <laughs> and the other is that this episode of Nerdy Show is also not just a podcast. But a video episode, we're premiering Nerdy Show content on the Nerd Nation Network on YouTube. Uh, anyway, so we're talking to knobs. We're going to do that. But first, I thought we should set the stage with our own uh, experiences with wrestling, our own feelings on wrestling. And I, I guess I'll start by saying that up until very recently, I had next to no appreciation for it. But my eyes have been opened. And uh, and I, I see the, I see the, the drama now the choreography the improvisation I I, I see the art to it it's still nothing mm. I would ever follow because uh, bit of a bit of an indoor kid not into sports even when it's uh, fictionalized sports <laughs> um, but sports uh, entertainment sports, uh. I mean mutant league football maybe I mean that's cool but but, uh, <laughs> but wrestling it's uh, maybe a little too real for me still but I I love the theatricality of it back in the day when I when I was in middle school we watched it a lot yeah. um, on TV so you it, got you actually got into it it was yeah I mean it. it it was a drama it was intense and I believed all of it was real so I was like holy crap this is happening can you believe and it not only that but it led to some of the best video games of our day the all the oh. like the wrestling games on N64 I played those like no religiously mercy. yeah amazing things and that was my experience with it but when I got older you know now um you actually appreciate how much work goes into it and it's ridiculous the amount of improvisation and like exercise you have to do just to keep up with that. I don't know how they did it because I, I could not. I feel like there was at a time that I didn't like wrestling. Like, like I feel like we watched wrestling all the time when I was a kid. My grandmother would be like, kill him, kill him. Wow. <laughs> Kill oh, him! Rip his head off! Get her in the ring! Right? Like, that's that's what it was like. And <laughs> so we watched chair. it, but I, I still have a pretty big yeah. appreciation for, for the sports entertainment. I mean, they're in a lot of ways real-life superheroes. Like, that's that's the drama that they're doing is, is a superheroic drama, but it's tethered into only slight mysticism rather than actual, like, superpowers and so on. But it, it's, it's fascinating, because, like, these guys are not just, like, operating at the peak of their, their physicality, but they're also sharp. I mean, they're like... I mean, they're not reading a script. No. No. Like, like they go in, they make it up on the spot, all the challenges to each other. I would just freeze and be like, ah, you're going down. <laughs> so... I, I wouldn't be able to do it at all. But the choreography, everything that's happening on stage, it's so ridiculous. It's so funny. It's so so well done. Um, I, I think like, we had to nasty eyes the show. Yeah, we, we need a nasty eyes nerdy you mean, show. You mean nasty, nasty, nasty eyes the nerd? Nasty eyes, guys. Nasty eyes. Right. Nasty, nasty size. Size. right. Na yeah, you're right. Nasty eyes. Nasty eyes. Nasty eyes. Okay. Let's get uh, Brian Knobs in here. Yeah, let's, nasty. All right, let's bring him in. Let's, let's, let's bring him in. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to move on down. Oh, yeah. oh. What's up, gentlemen? Hey, hey, hey. hey. How's everybody doing today? Good, good. Doing good. 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 Nice to see you. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, what have we got? Yeah, what welcome are, to the what show. What are your names here? D <laughs> d <laughs> so what have we got going um, on I'm, here? I'm it's high school I'm all over. Man. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's Cap, Brandon, and Chan. I like Yeah, Cap. How you doing, Cap? Doing good. I love your fingernails. Dick Big face, okay. Chan. 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 <laughs> Chan. With an N. Chan. Chan. With an N. Chan. Yeah. Oh, like Chan and Tatum? Exactly. So you're, next, you're gonna be in the next uh what's that called? Magic Mike? Oh Magic Mike. That's me, man. Yeah. We're in we're in Tampa. That's where hey, the shit is. That's it, from. baby. That's where everything happens, right? Yes. Here in T-Town. <laughs> so how you guys doing today? Thanks for having me on, by the way. Oh, well, thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Yeah. We're we're hoping this is gonna make a uh, nerdy show fan Twomper's day. He asked us to do a professional wet wrestling episode, so we're we're doing it for the fans. That's great. You know, uh, I used to be a nerd. I was just one of the first Atari players. Really? Oh, yes. Remember when the balls went dink 
Tong. Ding Tong. Ding Tong. I vaguely remember that. Maybe that's, <laughs> that's why, one of my favorites. Maybe that's why I got into pro wrestling. I was watching that crap. <laughs> I think much. that was a gateway to wrestling. Yeah, well, so. you, you do a lot of dinking and donking back and forth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, but anyway. Dinking and donking. Yeah. Oh, where, where, where's your mind at today? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're going to watch it. or break them glasses oh, and show them up with a sundo <laughs> shine. I'll tell you that right now. So just before we brought you, we were talking about how excited we were to, to nasty size our show today. We're really excited. Yes, we may have to nasty size it some more. I like that. You know, the graphics are looking good. Yeah. yeah. I love your hairstyle. Thank you. You know, you got a little bit of, uh, you know, Adrian Adonis in there. <laughs> if you remember him, that's an old time famous wrestler. He was awesome. I gotta look good, man. You do look good. <laughs> That's my feminine side coming out. Let's talk about those, the, those Adrian, he's old time Adorable. wrestlers that you are you're a part of. I mean, you 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 started in '86. Let's talk about your origin story. Uh, well, it started out back in the day. Uh, me and my partner Sags grew up in uh, Whitehall, PA, and you know we played little league together. At 10 years old, his tooth was already missing. It was ha he only had half a tooth. And I asked him what happened, and he said, uh, my brother shot it out with a BB gun. So I knew I'd be <laughs> friends with this guy forever, you know. <laughs> so years later, you know, we grew up, went to the same high school, and, uh, you know, we both got out, and uh, we're getting in fights, bar room fights all the time, and, and, and really in a lot of trouble. Finally, uh, you know, it came down to Matt Millen, who played for the Oakland Raiders, was a friend of ours. He was four, four years, five years older. And he got us and called us over to his house and said, hey, if you guys don't stop it and, 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 and get your act together and get your shit together, you're going to wind up in jail. And he said, hey, Nobs, why don't you try that professional wrestling? You wrestling and Sags. to not get in trouble. Yeah, well, he said, <laughs> he said uh, you know, why don't you try that professional wrestling? You always loved it, you and Sags. So back in the day in Allentown, they used to have the TV tapings there. And we got a hold of one of our friends that ran the hotel, and he knew George Steele really good, the animal. Yeah. So we bugged George the animal, and the next day, he, he did give me a call, and he invited me and Sag down, and here he had Jimmy Schnooka, Bob Orton Jr., and I forget, I think it was Don Morocco waiting to kick the living hell out of us. I was going to say, us. was it a trap? Yeah, it was, it was yeah. a trap, <laughs> but he said, well, if you're serious about wanting to be a pro wrestler, go to Vern Gagne School, and that'll either make you or break you, and he wasn't lying. Uh, Brad Reagans was our trainer, and he was an Olympic champion in the 76 Olympics. He won a bronze. Wow. Awesome. And there were awesome people that went through that camp, including Ricky Steiner, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, uh, Nord, uh, the Barbarian, or the Berserker. I mean, there's, there's just a list of talent that went through Vern Gagne's school. So when I got in, me and Sag to the wrestling school, there ain't no wrestling ring. There's Olympic mats. And for three months, we trained on Olympic mats and got thrown around like we were training for the Olympics. Like I was like, I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> and we started with 22 people. And me and Sag were the only ones to survive that camp. And, I mean, we got killed. And the only reason me and Sag didn't leave is our car broke down and we lived on the bottom of Brad's and the school was right there. So there was no way we were like caught in a trap. So we had to, <laughs> we had to get tortured every day, getting flipped around like you're a wet noodle by Brad Reagan and doing, we're, we're actually Olympic style wrestling. I'm like, where the hell are the turnbuckles? Where are the ropes? When is this stuff gonna start? And then the worst was, when you were beat up to the max, old Vern Gagne would come down at 60-some years old, take his tie off, and then take his shirt off, and get down on the mat with you, and put you in these called shooter holes that can actually <laughs> break your whole, your wrist, your arm, your leg, and all of a sudden you're sitting down, and all of a sudden, my grandmother could have beat me because Brad Reagan just tortured us for four and a half hours, <laughs> and he'd get you in his hole, and you're going, ah, please, no, Vern, yes, yes. This and is why a, I didn't get into wrestling. Well, it was a, it, it was a respect <laughs> value that they tried to teach back in the day. The old school mentality was just like here in Florida with Eddie Graham. They broke Hulk Hogan's leg. Uh, Mansuda broke his ankle the first time he tried out. Wow! And that was the thing back then. They didn't want you to get past. They wanted you to be tougher than nails, and and it was a respect thing. Wow! And they don't do that nowadays no more. I mean, you, you can't, but. No, I think that's why wrestling maybe changed a little bit because back in the day, they taught you respect first. And then when you were finished, you didn't get right in the ring. You refereed I, I and you drove the ring truck first and then you refereed. And me and Sack drove the ring truck for about six months. But when the ring didn't show up to a town one day and we were sitting at home drinking a beer, Vern gave us a call and said, never in my 25 years of owning the wrestling AWA 
business has the ring never shown up to a town? And I said, it wasn't our turn to drive it. And the other time was we were late <laughs> and we, went, we used to go out partying with like, uh, you know, Mr. Perfect, Jimmy Schnooker, right. Colonel De Beers, Hawk and Animal. And then all of a sudden we're driving and we're late already. So now the main eventers are always late to come to the show. Supposed to be there an hour before. So they're even late. They come there maybe showtime or whatever. And all of a sudden, Kurt said he was driving. God bless his soul. He was one of our mentors, Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning. He was, isn't that the ring truck? And me inside, we're driving the ring truck. So we had to set the ring up while the people were there. And the firm was crazy. <laughs> Who do you guys think you are? So after that, we were no longer ring truck drivers. And they moved us up to refing. And from <laughs> refing, we went to wrestling. And our first matches were in Stevens Point, Wisconsin for ESPN. Oh, I was Brian Knobs. I had the one singlet with my one boob hanging out that flopped around because I really didn't have the See, but was that you, right? Did you come up with that? Or did someone, like, set that up for you? Like No, uh, my real last name is Yandrizovitz. Click on over to the next part of our interview with Brian Knobs, and be sure to like this video and click subscribe to make sure you get the latest awesome geeky content here on the Nerd Nation Network. For the complete Brian Knobs interview and other podcasting awesomeness, head to the Nerdy Show Network over at nerdyshow.com or find us on iTunes and SoundCloud.